I didn't mean you've got buns, I meant I've got Asperger's Syndrome. Hello, Earthlings! So yesterday was uh, Autism Awareness Day, and this month, April, is Autism Acceptance Month, and last week was Autism Awareness Week, so it's not that big of a deal that I missed World Asperger's Day, because Asperger's Syndrome is on the autism spectrum, something that people have found out since I was diagnosed. A couple disclaimers before we start. I don't intend... I can't really speak for anyone besides myself. There are as many types of people on the autism spectrum as there are off, if not more. Also, there will be satire at some point in this video, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. I know much more about the autism spectrum from research than actually living on it, especially from watching uh, Amethyst Shaber's video, Ask an Autistic 23 What is Autism? I'll put a link to that in the description. She's put a lot of links in her description. She talks in that video about what autism is, the common traits we share. Yes, we do share some common traits, why it is a disability and other stuff like that. Uh, as she says, it only scratches the surface, but what a scratch. There are a few things from that video I should probably reiterate. Autism is a pervasive neurological developmental condition. Pervasive means it affects the entire beingness of a person and not just one part. And developmental means it develops during pregnancy and we are therefore born this way, insert Lady Gaga joke here. So trying to separate the condition from the person is a bit like trying to separate the flour from cookie butter. The term high functioning doesn't bother me personally, and I know a lot of other people identify as high functioning, but a lot of people don't like that word because it basically means able to pass for neurotypical, which not all of us do. But when we do, it renders the condition almost invisible. I'm not a big fan of the word mild, to describe it. Apparently when I was diagnosed, the, the doctor described my condition as mild Asperger's. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I've learned that basically mild is a matter of how people perceive you rather than how you perceive yourself. So the next time, God forbid anyone ever says to you, we're all a little bit autistic, you can say back, no one is a little bit autistic. You either are or you aren't. I mean, autism affects around 1% of humans, so I guess you could say the average person is 1% autistic, but th that's like the average family having 1.5 children, whatever that number is. I think it's around 1.5. It's definitely not a whole number. And I don't think that's the intent of the statement. One thing I also found out from watching Amethyst's videos is that some people pronounce the name as Asperger. And it's kind of cool how that prevents people from making the old donkey hamburger joke like Eminem, who might be Aspie himself. I don't know. But Asperger is much closer to the actual German pronunciation, since Dr. Hans Asperger, who it's named after, was from Austria. But what does this have to do with me, I hear you ask? Uh, <laughs> we should probably begin at the beginning. Like a lot of men on the spectrum, I was fortunate to be diagnosed as a young boy. It was sometime around first grade. It actually happened when I got my IQ test, and the doctor who gave me my IQ test said, I think he's got mild... That's the word she used, apparently. Mild Asperger's Syndrome. As I said, I didn't really know what that word meant. So I pretty much forgot about it until I came up in a conversation with my parents about five years later. And it seems like the older you are, the more excited you get when you meet someone else on the spectrum. I don't know if that's to do with the fact that so many of these autism-oriented websites are geared towards our parents rather than us. I met another Aspie guy in elementary school. That was back when I didn't know what the word meant, so 
Yeah. Met another Aspie guy in middle school. He only told me he had it when I was doing a presentation on Asperger's for science class. Funny thing about that is the book I was using as my resource had a guy on it who looked almost exactly like me back then, just with glasses. I was kind of happy to meet another Aspie guy back then, because I knew what it meant. But then in college, well, because in, you know, all the way up through high school, when I hung out with anyone at all, it was almost always with other musicians and music nerds, so that was kind of the click I fit into. But then when it came to college, I went to Berklee College of Music, where everyone's a musician. So usually dominant genre is enough to divide us. But sometimes it's not enough, what with all the genre cross-pollination that goes on there, all the networking. I mean, it's one of the most diverse colleges in the country or possibly the world. So when I met a, a couple of guys who happened to be the year below me, and they, they were, they both had Asperger's, they have both used that word to describe themselves. They've also used the word autistic. I'm slowly but surely getting more comfortable using that word to describe myself. But anyway, when I met them, I felt like I had found two of my long-lost cousins or something. They were Chris Dorsey, who currently plays trumpet in uh, a couple jam bands, Slack Tide and Lonely Path, formerly in Fordham Road, whose album I reviewed uh, a few a few months ago. And the other guy was named Will, but he's better known as Dump Hop. You may know him from his mashups uh, that he... He's best known for doing mashups. Um, although he does other DJ-related stuff. Two of my favorite mashups of his are The Free Fall, which is uh, Coldplay and Tom Petty put together. It's possibly an improvement on both songs. Another one I really like that he did is September's Kids, which is MGMT and Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's a bit more obvious of a title. So there are a few more points from Amethyst Shaber's video that I want to reiterate about common traits of the autism spectrum. One of them is that being on the spectrum doesn't affect your developmental capacities. We just have a, a slightly different way of processing information and sensory input. Another one is motor dyspraxia, which is a disconnect between the brain and the body with regards to movement. Again, this affects different people differently. In my case, it was uh, mainly with a few fine motor skills, like tying knots. To this day, I can't tie knots, so I wear shoes with Velcro like this. And then there's also handwriting. My handwriting didn't shrink as quickly as uh, other people's when I was in school, because when we learned to write, like in kindergarten, we had, um, we had paper where it would have two solid lines this far apart, and a dashed line in the middle, and we would write the letter between the two solid lines. So when I started using lined paper like this, I would just continue to write letters that took up two spaces. I didn't realize that sometime between elementary and high school, all my friends' handwriting shrank to one space. And I can write small, but I just naturally write... I think it's more like one and a half spaces now, but it, it can be anything from two to three. Stimming is another thing that's unique to autistic and Aspie people. The word stim is short for self-stimulate. In my case, it's, it's pretty much just a vocalization of whatever it is I'm thinking. I didn't used to think I stimmed much, mainly because so much of it w was either talking or singing to myself. Like a lot of other people on the spectrum, I don't really stim when I know I'm being watched because of this uh, unwritten perception in society that I'm finding it hard to put into words. But, uh, yeah. For some strange reason, I think one of my favorite ways to stim as of recent, like this only started in the past few months, is I will try to sing some song in an exaggerated Patrick Stump impression for some reason. And by Patrick Stump, I mean uh, not the real Patrick. I mean the one from Brendan Urie's Drunk History of Fall Out Boy, the, the one that went, yo, I got a soul voice. Yeah! That one. Another um, 
uniquely autism spectrum thing is the way we interact with our special interests and the stereotype, like, especially with Asperger's, is that we're really good with structure and making charts of stuff. So some of us will, like, gather information and organize it about our special interests. In my case, uh, it's, of course, music, so I will sometimes make these charts in Word for these different bands showing who wrote the music and the lyrics to which songs from which albums. I use color coding to show which instrument they play. I use the same colors you would see on a Wikipedia timeline, like red for vocals, green for guitar, etc. That one there is for Leonard Skinner. As you can see, the red is on top. Uh, that means Ronnie Van Zant, the singer, wrote most of the lyrics. That one is for the band Threshold. Uh, as you can see around here, uh, they changed bassists because suddenly the keyboardist is writing all the lyrics on the album Subsurface. And this one is for Cannibal Corpse. You can see, again, at this point when they changed vocalists, because the original vocalist wrote all the lyrics, and suddenly, uh, everyone's writing lyrics. Now we're gonna get into a couple stories. This first story, the darker one, comes from Berkeley, and I don't really come out of this story looking good but neither does the other guy, so on the offhand chance you're watching this, don't don't mention that it's you in the comments. So there was a thing going on in the performance center called Rock Pop Guitar Night, and uh, I was uh, playing in Joe Sprunt's band. Check him out, he's, uh, he's a guitar god in the making, and he's actually posted a video of one of the songs we did there, because we've ended as lovers. I'll link that in the description. We, uh, by we, I mean all the bands, us collectively together, we really brought the house down that night, one of the best nights of my life so far. And shortly after it, I got a Facebook message and a friend request from a guy who said he really enjoyed my keyboard playing and was wondering if I could accompany him for his jury performance. At that point, I didn't feel ready to have so many gigs on my plate at once because I was also gonna play with Joe again for his jury, and those two things were gonna be in the same week. I wasn't quite ready to play that close to back-to-back, -back, uh, once with a friend and once with a stranger. I mean, he, he was also a student at Berkeley, but I just wasn't ready at that point to have the gigs coming that frequently. But I also remembered something I heard at an orientation that I went to for Berkeley my senior year of high school, which was never say no to anything professional. I couldn't say no, because that would just be rude. At the same time, I didn't want to lie and say I was busy, so all these things clashed in my head. I don't want to do it, but I shouldn't say no, but I shouldn't lie. So in the end, I just didn't respond at all. And then, uh, the night after I played with Joe in his jury, the same guy messaged me again asking if I deliberately ignored him, and again, I couldn't bring myself to lie, so I just said yes. Mistake number two. I mentioned uh, at some point that I was Aspie, and wonder of wonders, he also found... he found another Aspie keyboardist who said yes to him. Earlier than that in the conversation, he mentioned that I couldn't take a compliment, which uh, is kind of true. It's a social cue I had to master. It's kind of weird that he only pointed out that I couldn't take a compliment, because uh, if I had said, I'm sorry, I can't, I have a class then, but ignored the compliment, he wouldn't have called me out for ignoring it. But if I had only said thank you, and ignored the request, I would end up in the exact same situation I ended up in. It's just that he couldn't have said, I can't take a compliment, because I obviously would have done. And I noticed that even though it was going to be impossible for us to be friends in real life now, not that we ever met in real life, but still, he hadn't unfriended me on Facebook. I didn't want to unfriend him right then and there, because that would make me look even worse than I did. And that would give him the moral high ground, and neither of us deserved the moral high ground. We were both in the wrong in our different ways. So I waited a few months before I saw a post of his, I think it was criticizing police brutality, 
protesters. And that was months later, maybe even a year later. So I, I just used that as an excuse to just quietly unfriend him. Because I knew he wouldn't miss me and I don't miss him. Because we only ever made a connection on Facebook. Anyway, time for some lighter stuff. This story um, is actually two kind of small stories. They both come from uh, second grade. My teacher at the time was uh, new to the school. She was still getting used to understanding students with disabilities. I remember we would sometimes be talking one-on-one -on -one and she'd say, look at me, and I'd go like this. This other anecdote, I don't actually remember this happening to me, but it must be true because my parents have told it a few times. It's also a result of me, like a lot of autistic and Aspie people, uh, we have trouble with eye contact. You may have even seen that in this video. I'm looking at the monitor instead of the lens of the camera at some points. Apparently what happened is, uh, again, in second grade we were in the middle of a math lesson and, uh, I was looking somewhere other than the board, and the teacher didn't think I was paying attention, so she asked me if I wanted to teach the class, and I thought it was a genuine invitation, so I said yes, and I, I did it. I didn't intend to put her in her place, I just thought I was accepting an invitation to be a teacher for a few minutes. So yeah, I, I hope you gain some insight into how my mind works, I guess. If you haven't, this is a very atypical video for this channel. This is possibly gonna be my only video that has nothing to do with my music. So if you like that, subscribe. If you really, really like it, ring the bell. I've put all my links in the description. I'll leave you with a, another quote from Amethyst's video. The thing to remember with autistic people is that we're people. So on that note, next week, more music. Uh, go forth and be awesome and vaccinate your kids.